This movie is the first in a series of five that demonstrate the basic use of FME Desktop as a tool for data translation and transformation. Each movie covers the content from one chapter of the FME Desktop tutorial. This movie covers the download, installation and licensing of FME Desktop from the point of view of a trial user. If you've already purchased FME, then you can download and install the full version. For more information, please refer to the FME Installation and Licensing Manual available on the Safe Software website. If you are using FME on a Linux or Unix platform, then please read the section Important Information in this chapter of the tutorial document. A trial version of FME can be downloaded from www.safe.com slash trial. Fill in the trial request form and choose which edition of FME you require by answering the question. If you aren't sure, then the edition for loading data into Oracle is usually a good all-round choice. The file you download will be called fme underscore eval.msi. Here I double-click the installer file to start the process. Once the welcome dialog appears, I click Next and then choose to accept the license agreement. FME can be installed in any location. Here, on my Windows 7 operating system, I am going to simply install it into the app slash FME folder. If there was a version of FME already installed in that location, I would be prompted to uninstall it first. The final dialog in the installer is a chance for you to return to any previous settings. When I click Install, then the installation process begins. Once complete, this dialog appears to let me know that FME is now installed. We should turn off the Run FME Workbench option and click the Finish button. Now let's look at licensing. By filling in the trial request form on the website, you will have received an email containing an activation code with which to license FME. Firstly, start the licensing assistant by selecting it from the FME desktop entry in the start menu. Simply choose the option to activate a trial version of FME, enter the code from your email, and FME will be licensed. To run the exercises in the tutorial, I need the FME sample dataset. This can either be copied from the DVD-ROM or downloaded from the Safe Software website at www.safe.com slash FME data. The FME data download is a zip file and our preference is to unzip the data directly to the root of the C drive. This will create a folder called FME data containing all of the required data and some predefined translations. Installing the data in a different location won't prevent you from using it in this tutorial, but any predefined translations in the folder would need editing to be able to locate the data. Now that we've installed FME in the sample dataset, let's start up an application by way of demonstration. In this case, I won't translate any data, just use the FME Universal Viewer to view it. I started the FME Universal Viewer by selecting it from the FME Desktop Entry in the Start menu. The FME Universal Viewer is a good tool for visually inspecting spatial data, regardless of type or format. It is a good introduction to the functionality of FME. I'll view some Map Info tab data by selecting File Open Dataset from the menu bar. FME prompts me to define the data being added. To specify the data format, I'll click in the Format field and start typing map info. A filtered list of formats appears and I will select map info tab brackets my tab. To select the file itself I will browse to the folder FME data slash data slash parks. In here I'll select the city underscore parks dot tab file. Now I click OK and the data is shown in the viewers display window. To query a feature I use the select tool from the toolbar. I click on a feature and information about it appears in this window. Notice that the information window displays user attributes and FME format attributes, as well as details about the feature's geometry, 
and coordinate system. Now a great feature of FME Universal Viewer is its ability to overlay multiple data sets in different formats or within a single window. This time I've used some raster data as a backdrop. I'll do this by using File, Add Dataset from the menu bar and filling in the fields much the same way as before. This time the format is PNG. I'll browse to the file, which is in the raster folder, and called Intropolis Center. Because newly added data appears at the top of the pile, I must move it below the previous map info dataset. I do this by using the display control window. The display control window is on the left hand side. I just need to drag that dataset below the map info. And now the parks data is above the raster data. So now I know that FME is installed and licensed and functioning correctly. If I do need any technical assistance while using FME, the best starting point is fmepedia.safe.com. From here a user can navigate to downloads, examples and documentation, plus also get in touch with the Safe Software support team. That concludes this movie on installation and licensing of FME. The next section in the FME desktop tutorial is format translation. On behalf of everyone at Safe Software, thank you for taking the time to view this FME desktop training presentation. We hope it was time well spent for you. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to contact Safe Software at any of the addresses shown, or look for further technical information at fmepedia.safe.com. Thank you.